Hello, everybody. Welcome again to AOPS Explain. Today we are talking again lock anomaly detection. And the topic we are addressing today is out of the box models using the newly released IBM Cloud Pack for Watson Helms version 3.4. And today I have again with me Xiao Tong. Please introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. My name is Xiao Tong. I lead a team of data scientists and engineers to infuse AI into IT operations. Thanks for having me here, Brad. Yeah, welcome. Uh, pleasure to have you here again. I guess the audience knows me already. My name is Fred Klein. I'm the technical leader for AirOps in the area of EMEA, and I'm located in Berlin. So we have prepared a few slides, so we want to briefly talk about what are the new out-of-the-box models. So why do we have that? What is that? How did we address this kind of topic before this release? And what's the difference with this release in here? And then we are going to show you a demo of how this looks like. Just to introduce the topic. So this is the IBM Cloud Pack for Watson and Hobbs. We do have a number of capabilities to join very, very different sources of information in operations. So, for example, event data, log data, metric data, but also in environmental data, which is capable of being analyzed by the natural language processing capabilities of the Watson engine. And we do have several pre-staging capabilities in here. So for example, if we go into event management and we do have this pattern engine in here, if we go into the lock anomaly detection capability, then we do have the, the capability of analyzing logs, learning what's normal. And as soon as we know what's normal and have placed the model in the background, then we are capable of comparing our current logs with the learned logs. So comparing what should be there with what is currently pouring into the system and then make our detections. And as well, that works with time series data, which is coming from monitoring environments, with ticketing and so on and so on. We do have quite a number of use cases in here and they all are aligned with the Watson engine and the different and various AI capabilities that we do have in this environment. They're all front-ended by several user interfaces as well as APIs, and we do have out-of-the-box integrations for several vendors and providers, for example, cloud providers or ticketing vendors, and uh, that makes it easier to, to deploy and uh, configure the overall solution. But today, we are concentrating on log anomalies again and what we can do in that kind of environment. And with that, I think I have talked enough and hand it over to you, Zerotan. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about the out-of-box uh, capabilities in Watson AI Ops. So the out-of-box models are ready-made models for incident detection, diagnosis, resolution, and uh, avoidance. So why we need these models? So basically, we found that a good chunk of every company's IT stack runs on standardized open source or vendor product platform. So for example, you may have your application running on IBM WebSphere as the middleware, uh, which operates on AWS infrastructure with AWS networking and Amazon S3 storage, or you can have your application running on IBM MQ middleware, which operates on the VMware Sphere infrastructure with VMware networking and vSphere storage. So these popular stacks often produce standardized metrics, logs, and traces, and which have their you know, issues, diagnosis, and resolutions well documented already. We're thinking, whether we can you know, leverage all this information and build some knowledge as pre-baked out-of-box models and content into the Watson AI Ops so that we can reduce the manual effort required for incident detection, diagnosis, and resolution. In Watson AI Ops 3.2, we already offer a, some of these uh, out-of-box capabilities. So basically, we delivered the out-of-box uh, log anomaly detection for WebSphere logs at the starting point, 
And it, because it's out of box, so we don't require any training data for users to use these uh, models. And at that time, web sphere logs are normally events. It just uh, considered as all other events, and it went through the event lifecycle, deduplication, other grouping, and story prioritization. In Watson Apps 3.4, we mainly focus on improving the explainability of the uh, log anomalies for these out of box capabilities. And also, we recommend the solutions based on the knowledge we build in this offering. What we have for improve the explainability. So basically, we associate every log, log anomaly alert in this uh, uh, out of box model we detected, and then we associate this uh, message ID, which is we identify the primary message code within this time period that we identify the anomalies, and we also found the explanations. Uh, which have the a short version and a long version that explain why this uh, we consider this anomaly, and also we identify the categories and subcategories for these problems, and also show the other message ID that are associated with this alert. So that's basically the explanation we have, and in, if you go to the next one. We also automatically recommend the best resolution that we brought from the knowledge base, including IBM Salesforce tickets, asset reuse manager, and the, the IBM support center. So we collect all this information and we rank the best resolution based on this information associated with this alert. So that here you can see these actions are already verified by the SMEs from IBM support. And which includes the title, the short description, and the link to the uh, detailed actions. How do we link these insights? Is there a sheer link between the error code, which is part of the text, or is this something more sophisticated using the natural language processing of Watson? Yeah, so there are different data sources available in this knowledge base. Uh, like I mentioned, we can have. Uh, Salesforce tickets that uh, document these uh, resolutions. Also, we can have some re uh, asset reuse manager that document these uh, categories, subcategories, and also with uh, IBM support search. So these are you know, manifest in different data sources. So we have AI to crawl all this data together and we clean and pro pre-process and put them together as a single knowledge base that we can directly, based on the message ID, we identify in the alert, and we can link this to these resolutions. Yeah, every URL here will link us to a like a page, either in IBM support or in the knowledge base, that we can find the actual action to resolve these issues. Yes, we're now going into the demo. Today, I'm going to play the role of a typical user of CloudPack for Watson AI Ops, namely an SRE. I'm part of an advertising company called Impact Ads. One of the clients just reported a problem that their application is unable to open. And as a result, I would need to identify the problem and resolve it. So let's say demo starts. All right, so to simulate the scenario, I'm going to inject a failure using this could have day app anomaly generator. So let's click start. A good chunk of our IT stack runs on standardized open source and vendor products and platforms. And one of them is IBM WebSphere application server. These popular stacks produce standardized metrics, logs, and traces, which are being monitored using IT operations data management tools. And one example is DocDNA. So before Cloud Path for Watson and Ops, it takes a long time for us to detect, identify, isolate, and diagnose the issue compared to executing the action to fix it. For example, as an SRE, I would have to ask the client to enable tracing using must gather, and then a support engineer has to go through the traces, determine the problem, and then provide the resolution. The time to resolution is roughly 10 days, if the application continues to be unavailable, there is a risk of losing revenue, a risk of brand damage, and the customer experience will suffer 
leading to frustration and abandonment. So let's check the AI ops. So we see it's already connected to a bunch of different connectors with different local sources. And we check the AI model management UI. We didn't see any models. So because for this scenario, we're demonstrating the out of box models, which does not require any training data. And we just need to wait a little bit for the alerts to show up. I will see an alert. So let's look into it. So the story is, has titled Logonomy found six logs containing arrows for this container queued day QR code. Um, let's look at the details. View alerts. Okay, now we see a lot of uh, information associated with alert. For example, the message code SSL C. 0008E and the explanation has unable to initialize SSL connection and authorize access was denied or security settings have expired, a new connection failed, complete a successful secure handshake, and the category belongs to security with SSL as a subcategory. We can also see the frequency of this message code. Um, and there's a bunch of recommended actions and we will look into those later. For now, we're going to look at the corresponding rollout that's associated with the message code. So, okay, this is a rollout. Okay, so there's a bunch of more information about these exceptions. The SSL exception received fatal alerts. Okay, so let's pick up one of the uh, resolutions, see what we have. So this is all the resolutions that have been verified by SRE from IBM Support Center. Okay, so looks like there's some synchronization issue, so the solution will be manually rerun it. Okay, so if we come back to this uh, web console, we can see the stories created. And if we look at the details of this alert, we can see the similar information. Okay, so log anomaly, message code, explanations, categories, subcategories, and recommend actions. All right. That was really insightful. Of course, we do have documentation in place for our latest and greatest version. It's uh, the Cloud Factor What's Now Ops version 3.4. So here's a link into the documentation. And yeah, th thank you, Fred. So one thing I want to mention here is today we offer this capability for WebSphere in 3.4 and in 3.5. And in the future, we are working on extending this support to other IBM products like DB2 and MQ. So more exciting stuff will come. Thanks, I think that's it. If you wanna see something else in these kind of uh, videos recorded or explained by us, then just let us know. For now, I want to thank you for your time you spent with us watching another video. And I want to thank you, Yadong, for your time explaining it to us. It was really, really cool. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.